Hi, welcome back to my channel, and this is a sound off on the Real Housewives of Potomac. So we are only on episode four, and I'm already over this. <laughs> like, I'm going to be real honest with y'all. <laughs> I'm already like, I didn't give y'all a video for episode three because, child, y'all been seeing what's going on. Okay, so in this scene with NECA and her husband driving home from the airport, I've already told y'all I don't see it for her, and it's not changing. And the more we get into the season, the more I really realize, like, I'm really not here for her. I'm sorry. I just, I'm not. So this car ride scene with NECA and her husband, and she's explaining about her cousin-in-law and Wendy's mama and Wendy's sister, it doesn't really make sense to me. When you first met Wendy on the show, y'all energy was nice. It was pleasant to her. She was pleasant to you. You told Ashley you met her once at a concert and she was very nice to you. That's what you said. Now, all of a sudden, you explaining to Robin something different. You explaining to your husband in the car something different. Neka, you messy. You messy, and I can't keep up. If you only met Wendy one time at a concert and she was nice to you, and you liked her, and y'all got along, then you saw her at Ashley's um, housewarming, and y'all got along. Where is this story coming from? I'm starting to feel like you're lying. I'm starting to feel like there's something going on that's not quite truthful. You tried to name drop Wendy and Wendy didn't go along with it. And then your husband name dropped Eddie. was like, oh yeah, I went to school with him. I know him. We're Facebook friends. Now he removed you off of Facebook. This is weird. You guys are both Ebo, but y'all don't know each other like that. Everybody knows somebody to know somebody to know somebody. Like I'm not... Ebo at all but I can make a couple of phone calls and find out some information on certain people that's just how that goes that doesn't mean that I know the people that doesn't mean that I know you that doesn't mean that Wendy and Eddie knows this couple I kept seeing so many people on Twitter being like oh they know each other I don't think they know each other it's nothing to pick up the phone and call somebody and be like hey you know so and so and so and so and so especially now that Wendy and Eddie are on TV they've been on TV for four years now Anybody can say they know something about them at this point. That don't mean you know them. Let's use our brains, people. Let's use our brains. And see, one thing about Housewife fans is they gonna fact check. Somebody pointed out, like, how do you have receipts on Eddie unfollowing Ike on Facebook? Like, did you take a screenshot of him following you? And then when he unfollowed you, you would just happen to take another... Like, that's weird. Something about that isn't quite right. That's weird. Like, those receipts were doctored. They were. And y this is dumb. This is dumb. Whoever idea this was, production, y'all are dumb for going along with this. This is dumb. Okay, so Robin and Giselle meeting up for lunch. This scene was... I guess it was interesting. You know, Bravo released a sneak peek ahead of time. So everybody was, yo, they was dragging Robin in the comments. <laughs> they was dragging Robin in the comments. Okay, everybody was feeling a kind of way because Giselle accused Juan of yelling at her. And Robin was like, he wasn't yelling at you, girl. He can't hear because he was a coach, girl, because he used to yell all the time. He can't hear you, girl. That's why he was yelling. I laughed a little bit because I'm kind of like that. Sometimes... I yell and I'm not realizing that I'm yelling and it is because my hearing is not that great in one of my ears. And so sometimes I catch myself yelling at people and I'm not trying to yell. I just talk loud. So when she said that, I did have to laugh. I laughed at that because I know that struggle. But I don't know if I believe that Juan was yelling at Giselle. I think Giselle, be, Giselle lied. Giselle lies and I think I really think that Giselle be trying to throw Robin a bone and Robin don't be picking up on it Robin really Her only focus is protecting Juan Which is sad because Juan don't ever be trying to protect her Juan don't ever be trying to help her out Juan She be really trying for her man and her, Juan ain't no good, but whatever that's her man. Okay, she gonna stick beside him But yeah, I really think Giselle was trying to spice up the conversation and trying to make it look like, yeah, girl, he was yelling because he passionate. He trying to save his family. He care about his home. He care about Robin. He want to win Robin back. You know, he want to get things back on track. I think that was the reason for her to say he was yelling at me that he did not sleep with that woman. 
And Robin, she was like, no, nah, he wasn't yelling. He wasn't yelling. You ain't going to go on TV and say my man was yelling at you. Robin can be a doofus sometimes. I just, I just don't know about her. But anyways, they move on to that conversation about the whole Wendy's mama is a witch and she's doing voodoo on people. And this is... It's disgusting. First of all, Robin, you sitting up here like, oh my God, these people just like the gossip and they just keep talking about me and Juan and it's cruel. It's a pile on and they have taken my joy. But you salivate whenever it's someone else's situation. Whenever someone else is going through something, you be excited. You be sitting there like Stevie J, rubbing your hands together like Birdman. And it's like... I was feeling sorry for you at first. When your ass is sitting on that curb and Austin crying, I ain't gonna feel sorry for you because you do this all the time. This is the reason why people were jumping on your back last season when we found out what Juan did because you love to sit up here and talk about other people's business, but your business, you supposed to be exempt from the humiliation. You, this is the reason why people don't fuck with you. This is the reason why people don't like you and they want you off the show because you do shit like this. Okay, so Candace and Miss Dorothy's scene, it was cute. Um, one thing about Miss Dorothy, she gonna fly into town to shoot her scene, okay? She gonna get her camera time. Now, as far as her telling Candace that Candace needs to have a conversation with Robin, I don't really know how I feel about that. Robin is done with Candace. Robin is done with Candace and her friendship. And I want Candace to be like, okay, cool. <laughs> I really want Candace to just be like, whatever. And this is really sad, right? But coming from someone who used to really love Candace and Robin, um, I loved Robin. I really loved Robin. But I can honestly say that Robin is not the friend to Candace that Candace is to her. I've seen Robin do a lot of questionable things over the you know past few seasons. And if I was Candace, I would be okay with losing that friendship. Because I don't think that Robin was a real friend to her. I think with Candace, she's a protective type of friend. As small as she is, she rides for her friends. Robin rides for Giselle. That's just point blank in the period. I, I don't feel like she has to choose because I'm not that person that has to choose. I'm friends with people who don't like each other and I know how to, I know how to navigate that, right? When you're friends with this person over here, I mean, really, all of, if you're a real bitch, you can be friends with people. Like, they don't all have to like each other. If you're a real bitch, you could just be real. And you could love Giselle down, but Giselle is wrong. You could tell her she's wrong. She started off last season on Candace's side, but it always felt a little weird to me. It always, I never trusted it. I've been side-eyeing Robin for a while now. First of all, if we're really going to get into it, season five, when Monique reached across the table and pulled Candace across the table, slammed her head on that table. Robin stood there holding the table. She stood there watching. You say you look at Candace as your little sister. There's no way in the world. Ain't no way in the world that my friend that's like 5'2", 108 pounds, is getting beat up or getting assaulted. And I just stand there and watch and be like, I'm going to get you up off my friend. If I got to take a couple of hits so that I get you off my friend, I guess I'm going to have to take a couple of hits. I'm not standing there watching you pound your fist into the back of my friend's head and I just stand there watching like, oh my God, oh my God, making faces. I know it's not Robin's job to be security, but there's no way in the world that Giselle would have been getting attacked and she would have stood there watching the shit happen, holding the table. She would have gotten, she would have started swinging too. And I'm not even saying she had to swing on Monique, but I'm going to get you off of my friend. And I think with Candace, Candace has been treated so badly on this show that any bit of love that she gets, she magnifies it. She's used to her mom talking down to her. She's used to her mom and her going back and forth. So I feel like when Robin was the only one who came to her house to check on her, she took that and she made it to be bigger than what it was. When Robin and Giselle seemed to be fighting for her and was on her side against Monique, she took it to be more than what it really was. 
A lot of people called it out and said, they don't really got your back. They don't really love you like that. But in that moment when the entire world is against you and you're getting that little bit of support, it's going to feel like something. But last season, when Robin flipped on Candace and pulled out that Bluetooth speaker and tried to humiliate her in front of the rest of the girls and make the rest of the girls upset with her to take the focus off of what Giselle said about Chris, she proved she wasn't your fucking friend then. So I don't know. I don't know how I feel about Mama Dot telling Candace, well, you got to move forward. I do think you should move forward. I do think you should be forgiving, but I also don't think you should be a fool and sit up there and you just keep turning the cheeks, getting slapped on this side and getting slapped on that side and you keep getting slapped all over again. I think at some point you have to be okay with losing some friendships. I don't think Robin's friendship was worth anything. If you could go on TV and say that Chris did not remember what happened in that hotel room because he was drunk, you and you're not a friend. You're not a friend because what we should have seen Robin do last season at that reunion is say the truth. Giselle, you put 20 on 10. You did too much. Candace's anger towards you is warranted. Then you could have also said what you said. Chris, you were wrong for asking her to go into the hotel room and speak. That doesn't look good either. Y'all both were wrong. If she could have acknowledged the wrong on both parts, on both sides, I would be looking at Robin completely different, but it was the fact that bitch, at some point, Giselle was like, I need you to be on my side. When they were on that trip to Miami, she found a way to completely jump on Giselle's side. Robin was a fake ass bitch towards Candace. I don't care nobody say. I don't know if the rest of y'all let y'all friends play in y'all face the way that Robin played in Candace's face, but she definitely did. I mean, at the end of the day, I can't blame Robin because we all know that one of the main things that's kept Robin on this show so long is that she's a green-eyed bandit. She cannot turn on Giselle. The moment she turns on Giselle, the moment Giselle turns on Robin, Robin don't have a place on this show anymore. Y'all see what happened with Sharice? Sharice used to give Giselle the business. They done brought Sharice back. Sharice, she done fell in line. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. I just want Candace moving forward to realize this bitch ain't your friend. She wasn't ever your friend. They put her in place to manage your emotions. She was always working for the other side. She ain't never been on your team. So anyways, about this pickleball event. Um, I seen people shading it because they said she had baked beans or whatnot. But I'm going to tell you what, I don't care. It's a million times better than Robin's family flop day. That shit was sad. This is this is a this is this is way better. Say what y'all want about Karen's event. Karen is the one person that consistently throws and hosts events since season one. Consistently. Y'all want to shave these people as much as y'all want to. But how many events has Giselle hosted? How many has Robin hosted? How many has Ashley hosted? They are the main ones that be sitting in the corner snickering and laughing and judging people. But how much, how many times have they put up their money and hosted an event? I would like to know. It's always the same people throwing events. Karen throwing events, Candace throwing events, Wendy has thrown events. Everybody else. Ashley had her birthday party season one, right? And it was at Michael's club that he's part owner of and she had a cash bar people love to come for candace's cash bar at the um anniversary party but ashley had one first giselle probably is the bottom of the list she had what did she have i think she had like a test she had that party for her um makeup line right that was what season two then she threw her twins a birthday dinner last season that's all i remember Robin had her PR event season three, but she wasn't the only one. Like, that was a joint effort, right? And then her engagement party, that Christmas party, I had heard that that wasn't her party. I heard that that was Jamie Tyler's party from Love and Marriage DC. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I heard. I heard they used that man's party and pretended that that was their party for the cameras. That's what I heard. Y'all let me know if that's true or not. I don't know. And then she had the family flop day last season. 
And then that's really it. Am I missing anything? No, Ashley has actually had a few. She had, Ashley had her birthday party at Michael's bar. She had Uncle Lump's party at Michael's bar. She had the sip and see at her house. And then she had the housewarming party. So she spent minimal dollars, but she's had a couple of stuff. Um, Mia had that free picnic in the park, her garden party. That's the last we've seen of that. Sharice used to throw events when she was on the show. And then who else we got? Candace. Candace's wedding had to be the biggest event that they've ever had. The most luxurious. Candace's wedding was massive. Then she had her anniversary party. She had her little slumber party at the house, um, season six. Um, Candace is thrown. She spent a coin or two. She had her um, album release party. She had her video release party. Candace has spent the coin here and there. Um, Wendy had her daughter sip and see. She had the boys christening or their first communion. And Karen, Karen, honestly, y'all can shade Karen's baked beans, but she's been the only one consistently throwing events throughout the season. She's the only one. Giselle had her daughter's birthday at a Mexican restaurant. But then she made fun of Karen's spring fling party last season. Oh, it's at a Mexican restaurant. How you gonna have a spring fling party at a Mexican restaurant? It looked better than the one you threw for your kids. But can I just say, I am living for the way that Karen keeps shading me. <laughs> she was like, oh, we can do this now. We can do this. Like we're not hugging yet, but we could do this. That's how you have to treat people like Mia. Like, that's really how you have to treat people like her. I know, I know sometimes I'll be giving Karen the business, but I'm gonna always give credit where credit is due. I love how she's handling Mia. So Robin and Juan showing up to this pickleball event was funny because you could tell they walked in there thinking that people were gonna care more about them than they did. And they didn't really get the attention that they thought they were gonna get. And Robin showed up in there with her little see-through um, two-piece set. Two -piece set. I mean, I'm here for those type of outfits. Like, people was laughing at Robin. Karen's confessional was hilarious. She was like, girl, put them things away. Don't nobody want that. If y'all know me in my real life, I'm all here for the whole attire, okay? I'm, I'm with it. I'm with it. I liked her outfit. I just find it funny. I just find it funny that this is the same woman that sat with Giselle scrutinizing Wendy's attire. Like, you was talking about Wendy's outfits, and now look at you. I thought you didn't care. I thought you didn't care that people thought that Juan was a cheater. But it's looking like you putting that body on, you putting that body yaddy yaddy on display because you have to remind them help us that, you know, that's your man. What, girl, what, what's up? Ain't that what, isn't that the logic that you and Giselle applied to Wendy when Wendy was getting all cute and stuff season six? Okay, when she was getting her Porsche on, I mean, I guess. Robin stay reading herself, because I know y'all heard, you know, she went on, her and Giselle went on their Patreon or whatever, and she said, be careful what you say about other people, because you might find yourself in that same mess. And it it's literally like what they tried to do to Wendy season six happened to her. She's living that right now. Y'all came on there trying to say Eddie was out here in these streets. And really, it was Juan that was out here in these streets. And now you're dressing sexy over time trying to keep your man's attention. But y'all accuse Wendy of doing it. Ashley, too. Girl, I know you don't be intended on reading yourself. But, girl, you do. Now, I will say most of the ladies look really cute in their pickleball attire. Most of them. Mia looks really cute. Cannot stand Mia, okay? But Mia's outfits, it's like she's not like a fashionista. She's not over the top, just a stylish, stylish person. But I like to give credit where credit is due. Mia's outfits are always cute for me, in my opinion. I think she looks really, like her little skirt was cute. Um, I wish Karen, Karen looked all right. Karen didn't look bad. Like, it didn't bother me. I, I didn't I didn't mind it. I'm not gonna talk about the other outfits, like the ones that looked crazy. I'm not gonna talk about y'all. But overall, most of the girls look cute. Ashley looked cute, and I don't even like Ashley. 
Ashley look cute, Robin look cute, Candace look cute, Wendy look cute, Mia. Kiana, she looked real cute. If I didn't mention your name, I didn't mention your name. And I'm glad most of the ladies look good because their skills were lacking. But I mean, I guess this is just a game for fun. This is like an ice breaking activity because the group is, they frozen. They not, half of the people ain't fucking with the other half. Y'all know it, y'all. It is what it is. Now this scene where everybody was gathered around the table and Karen was trying to, I guess, bring the group together. And she was just like, hey, you know, half of us ain't speaking to the other half. But Robin showed up, and me and her are the ones that are not seeing eye to eye. And then Juan jumped up and scurried away. Juan is so, what did you think Karen was going to say? Juan, how you doing over there in Canada? Like, what did you think Karen was about to say? And even if she said it, you do these things and you have embarrassed your wife. You mean you couldn't stand there for two seconds as a man and just say, hey, it happened. I'm not going to discuss it with y'all. I don't owe y'all no explanation. Like, this is the man that Giselle wants us to believe was yelling at her backstage in Atlanta saying he did not do this with this woman. He can't even stand there for two seconds to just hear what Karen had to say. And all Karen was saying was, I'm glad Robin showed up because she and I are not seeing eye to eye, but she showed up for the sake of this group. You ran away from that. That was really Juan's moment. Let's just say Karen really did like say something messy, right? That was really Juan's moment to rise to the occasion to protect his woman and to say, you know what? I made that mistake. I don't think it's fair that, you know, people are coming at Robin. Like, he could have used that opportunity to really be a man and show us, like, I'm, I ride for mine. Like, I'm going to protect mine. Y'all come at me, not at her. Like, he really missed that opportunity. But, child, I guess. If Robin don't care, why should we? Now, Neka steps up to say, hey, you know, I think some things got lost between you and I, Ashley. And she brings up the whole Osu conversation situation. And I really don't understand how it is that Ashley is able to start fires every single season. And then she hides her hands and she just smiles. And then everybody's acting like Ashley didn't fuck up. Ashley didn't do all of this. I feel like it was so annoying. Like I was so annoyed with Winnie and NECA. Let me say this. I'm not one of those people that feel like because Winnie and NECA are both Igbo girls, they got to be besties. I don't care about that. Like they don't have to be best friends. They don't have to be friends at all. They don't have to be this duo. I'm not one of those people that's corny that believes like, oh, they got to team up against the Green Eye Bandits. I'm not here for none of that. If they did that, I would think that that's corny. I was annoyed with NECA and Wendy because it's like, Ashley played in both of y'all faces, but y'all only have smoke for each other. I don't like that. I don't like it. I feel like this was a time for Ashley to actually answer for the bullshit that she likes to stir up. I really do. Instead of you guys going for each other. But I do feel like NECA came on the show with an agenda. I feel like no matter what happened, she was going to find a way to come for Wendy and that's what she did um she brings up obviously y'all saw her bring up this whole conversation about what's her name she brings up this conversation about how her cousin-in-law talked to Wendy mama but talked to her Wendy but talked to her sister I don't have the time for that I, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't care. Like your feelings are clearly at the end of the day, we see your feelings are hurt that Wendy did not want to usher you into this show and say you were her home girl. And girl, we don't care. This is the thing. I can totally believe that conversations were had. Um, I can believe that Wendy's sister might've called the cousin-in-law. What makes sense to me? Is that probably Miss Necka did name drop Wendy, but then also was talking shit about Wendy. And that probably got back to the sister and the mama. 
And then they probably called up the cousin-in-law and was like, hey, warn your little new cousin-in-law to be easy on Wendy. Because we don't want to have to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. That's what it sounds like took place. Because if you just simply said, oh, yeah, I met Wendy. She was nice to me. Why would her mom and her sister now be calling your cousin-in-law to threaten you? That doesn't make sense. Something is missing from the story. Something somewhere don't add up. Season six and season seven, y'all saw what Wendy went through. Y'all saw how they attacked Wendy's marriage season six. And then y'all saw how Mia physically attacked Wendy season seven. I can totally see Mama Susan saying, this new girl coming around, starting stuff with my child, she better take it easy because I'll deal with her a different way. I could totally see that happening. But the fact that, oh, they just, she just didn't want me around because I'm Nigerian and she's Nigerian, girl, bye. I don't believe that. Tell that to somebody who's going to believe it because I don't believe that. That sounds like bullshit. Either that or it was the Osu conversation. It makes sense that Wendy went home and told her people like, oh, this girl's talking about I'm Osu, right? That would have made sense, except the Twitter investigators say that this whole thing happened before Ashley's get together. So if this happened before Ashley's get together, that means you still not someone to be trusted because you came to that get together and you were nice to Wendy and Wendy was nice to you. And when you were asked about Wendy, you still had nice things to say about Wendy. All of a sudden you meet up with Robin and now your story has completely changed. Something about NECA just doesn't, mm, something about her just isn't quite right. I don't know. I don't know. I just think this is dumb. I just, I don't like people who bring information like you're bringing outside shit into this show that just don't fit it just don't go here it don't go here it like it don't go here and i don't even care i'm not invested enough to care i know everybody want to put on their scooby-doo hats but to me for me i just really feel like you was probably talking shit you wanted to name drop her you wanted to use her but in the same breath you also wanted to talk shit and be shady it's about, is she a doctor, a real doctor, a doctor of philosophy? You probably, if you did that on camera, who knows what you were saying behind the scenes? It probably got back to Wendy or her people, some of the stuff that you, some of the stuff that you were saying, and the mama checked you and was like, be careful with my kid. Because she didn't already went through some bullshit last season and the season before that. You, I can get to you a lot quicker than I can to Mia. So I'm going to check you. Like, that's the only thing that makes sense to me. And now you want to play victim. Girl, I guess. Now, this whole submitting a name to the shrine business, I don't have time for this. I already told y'all how I felt about this a couple videos ago. Um, they're trying to make a mockery of African people, African culture, African religion, spirituality. I don't like this. I don't like this. I'm not going to stand for this. This is nonsense. If you really thought that Wendy's mom is a witch and she's putting your name in a shrine, um, you wouldn't be on TV. You would not go on TV talking about this. Because if you know, you know. Yeah, I just, I don't like it. I don't like it and I don't really want to go back and forth with it. It's pissing me off because I want to give NECA grace and say, well, Ashley stirred this up and it's not her fault. And, you know, she's just defending herself. I would love to give that to her. But my thing is, I'm going to go right back to the beginning of the situation. When Ashley asked you about Osu... I don't know how it is you women weren't offended. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. If she would have asked me something like that about my culture, um, I would have been offended. I'm not going to, I'm not here to educate you on foolishness. Like, I would have been offended. Wendy's been on this show since season six. I've never seen any of the ladies, any of the ladies curious about her culture. I've never seen them ask her questions. All the things that you could ask Wendy about her African culture, her Nigerian culture, her heritage, where she comes from. I haven't seen any of these ladies take an interest in none of that. And so for the first time for you to ask her something, you're asking her about Osu. And it just so happens that the blog was talking about Osu. This is the same blog that said Giselle had a hot box. This is the same blog that untalked, that undragged Robin and Sharice and Candace. For this to be the first time you show any interest in Wendy's African culture, 
I would, I, I know, Wendy, you had to know that they were playing in your face. NECA, you too. Of all the things you could want to know, all the things you could be curious about, all the things that you could want to learn, all the things to ask her, you ask her about this. I feel like, how do you not instantly feel as if that she's playing in y'all face? I just, I don't, I'm not here for it. I'm not giving Ashley no passes. Ashley's who's, I'm on Ashley's neck. When Ashley asked y'all that, y'all, I don't understand how y'all weren't offended. I would have felt disrespected. Like, excuse me? Of all the things to know, that's what you're asking me about? It really feels like when white people play in our faces, white people will show Africa, they will show the wild, they will show the animals, they will show people who live in the huts as if that's what Africa is. They won't show you the real parts of Africa. They won't show you where the people really live. They won't show you that. They will show you the most, they will show you the parts that make it seem as if African people are not humans. Meanwhile, when y'all not looking, they vacationing in Africa. Meanwhile, they're in Tanzania. They are in Morocco. They're in Zambia. They're in South Africa living extravagantly well. They won't show you where they vacation, but they'll show you where the cheetahs and the lions are to make it seem like African people aren't humans. That's what I feel like is going on here, and I'm disgusted, and... NECA very much is acting like, you know how we call the agreeable blacks? She's acting like the agreeable African woman. Like, I'm going to sit up here and use this fake Valley Girl accent and be like, oh my gosh, Karen Purple, that's my favorite color. And do all of this shit. And then behind the backs, I'm going to tell them how your mama is a voodoo witch and they shouldn't like you, but they should like me. I don't like people like NECA. I know her kind. Like, this is nasty. I don't like this. Y'all have never cared about Wendy being Nigerian and all the stuff that y'all went to the sip and see season five and then that was it I ain't never seen y'all ask anything else y'all have never had any interest and now y'all are bringing this up y'all are playing in our faces and I don't like it if I was if I was NECA I would not have even entertained that conversation I would have made Ashley feel so stupid for even asking me about that I would have been like why are you asking me about that you just sat up here and told us you have all these other Nigerian friends. If this was something you were so curious about, why didn't you ask three years ago when the article came out? Why didn't you ask Ngozi, your friend that you say introduced you to NECA? Why didn't you ask them? Why are you asking now on national television? It's like, I would have been instantly like, uh-uh, girl, we're not doing that. We're not, you're not going to use me to bring up taboo subjects about my culture, about African culture. You're not going to play in my face like that. I would have respected NECA. They would have had to move on to something else. But you encouraged this nonsense, and we didn't have this nonsense before you came on the show, so I'm not really here for NECA. I'm really not. And I understand a lot of people do not like Wendy. A lot of people feel like, oh, we don't know what really happened between Eddie's family and her family. And they're using this as like, oh, this is how, this is the real reason. that Y'all really want to believe that all about the T story, and it's like, y'all sound stupid. And they sound stupid. Some of the things that they have been saying sound so... It's just so ignorant. It's just so ignorant. I just, I cannot, I cannot be a part of this. Like, it's just. And then Nekka gonna have her husband trying to charge up Eddie. And then those stupid ass gonna chime in talking about some Eddie don't want that smoke. What smoke? What smoke? Nekka don't want that smoke with her husband's family. Because can you imagine Having your license revoked or not being able to renew your medical license because you went on TV to fight because someone didn't want to be your friend on Facebook. That'll be the end of her marriage. Like she's sitting up there being real cute in the confessionals talking about, oh, it looks like Wendy wears the skirt and the pants in that marriage. Girl, Wendy and her husband been married for 10 years. You just married your man. You might want to be cute about that. You might want to shut up before his family run you up out of here. Can you really imagine being a whole medical doctor and you fix your mouth to complain? Oh, like, Eddie, are you saying you and I were not friends on Facebook? Are you for real? I remember being on Facebook back when you needed a college email to, in, to get you an account, right? 
Back in those days, it wasn't a lot of people on Facebook. So if you were on Facebook, everybody was your friend. You would add them. Oh, you went to my school? Okay. Someone sent you a friend request, you accept it. It was not... That didn't mean y'all are y'all are besties. She said they was in ASA together. Baby, we was all in ASA. I don't remember half the people I was in ASA with. Shout out to ASA Lamar chapter, okay? We was all in ASA. That don't mean we know each other. Like, <laughs> this is so stupid. This is dumb. This is really dumb. This is dumb. It really seems like, NECA, you were stalking the fuck out of Wendy. And you were just trying to use any type of, oh, I know her because my husband and her husband went to school together and they were in the ASA together. And I know her because my cousin-in-law is fespies with her, her sister. And I know her because da 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 You don't know her. You're not even from the Maryland area. You're not even from the DMV area. You don't know that girl. And you butt hurt because she didn't want to be your friend. But you probably was giving weird vibes. And instead of Wendy telling everybody like, oh, I met this girl and she was giving weird energy. She just said, oh, yeah, I met her in passing. People don't know how to take a bone when they're thrown one. So while I have you, let me just say this real quick. OK, um, I understand that Wendy has rubbed a lot of people wrong. A lot of people don't like Wendy. A lot of people aren't featuring Wendy like that. And that's fine. She's not for everybody. Everybody don't have to like her. OK, the people who do like her and do support her, more power to them. And the ones that don't, more power to them. It doesn't matter. Um, but it's just weird to me how people like hate her so bad. Like they hate her so bad. Like they're salivating at the chance. Like, oh, she's about to get exposed. Exposed for what? Exposed for what? This is really her life. She's really married to that man. She really has these children. She really went to school and got an education. Expose her for what? I just don't understand what's all this like. This anger and this hatred to the wars. This woman is just weird. I don't get it. Like I'm really trying to understand what Wendy did to warrant any of this. Like, she ain't came on here and lied on nobody. She ain't brought no rumors to the show. She ain't sat up there and plotted against nobody. She haven't attacked nobody. Literally, Wendy just be over there trying to get the most out of being a housewife. Does she want to be the housewife favorite? Yeah, she wants to be a little bit of the favorite. Okay, she ain't the only one. So does Mia. So does this new girl. Like, I don't understand what she has done that, like, everybody is like, yes, she's going to get exposed. I, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get it. What has she done to anyone? Giselle and Robin started with her, and she wrapped y'all on up. Ashley started with her. Now, her and Ashley, they were both postpartum. They was both going back and forth. But, Ashley, you called this woman ferocious. You tried to be elitist with her first talking about my husband is the owner of the company. And then you called her stupid and you said her argument was stupid. And when she hit you back with, I'm not stupid, I have four degrees, people like you call me Dr. Wendy, now she's the bad guy. All she's ever done is respond. Y'all came after this lady for four seasons now. This doesn't make any sense. And I'm gonna be the, I'm gonna call myself out first. Season six, she got on my nerves. I was on Team Robin and Team Giselle all of season six. At the reasonably shady event, when Giselle kept coming at Wendy about these Eddie rumors is when I was like, okay, you know what, Giselle, now you're going too far. This lady already let you know to leave her and her husband alone, and you still keep doing it. And you're going to give Robin that shady question to ask Wendy. That's when I was like, you know what, maybe I'm looking at this wrong. Because I really don't see what it is that Wendy has done. Like, why people hate this woman so much. Like, you cannot like her. It's cool. You don't have to like her. There's people on the show, I, I don't like Ashley. I would, never fix my, I would never fix my hands to go send a hateful tweet to Ashley saying vile things. I prefer not to talk about her. I don't think she really getting a divorce. But you ain't gonna see me obsessing over it. I don't think me are really getting a divorce, but you ain't gonna see me obsessing over it. Like, I just really would like to know why y'all hate Wendy so much. And then when y'all get rid of Wendy and y'all replace her with NECA, yo, if y'all pull that off, if NECA could sit up here and do all of this to Wendy, what do you think she's gonna do to y'all? If she is successful in getting rid of Wendy, which I doubt, I don't think that's gonna happen, but let's just say she was, what do you think she's going to do to you guys? Good luck, Giselle. Good luck, Robin. If they keep her, Robin, you might be out the door. 
Like, I'm not, I was never one of the people that wanted to get rid of Robin because I've always liked Robin. But Robin, girl, I think your days might be numbered. But anyways, y'all, um, I try to keep this video light because this, <laughs> I am anything but amused with season eight of Real Housewives Potomac. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I tried to keep this video cute energy because it ain't been given cute energy. It really hasn't. This whole voodoo witchcraft storyline, I don't like it. I don't like it. It's like we ain't even dealt with the colorism and the racism on this show. And now we're going over to xenophobia. Oh. This is trash. <laughs> this really is. But, but anyways, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.